check my volume. All right. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we have t equals 5 pi over 3. All right. And what we need to do is we need to be able to determine what is the point for the angle t equals 5 pi over 3. So in playlist 1, 2, and 3, uh, I describe how to first start writing an angle. All right. So the first thing we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, actually there's three things we're going to do. First thing we need to know is, again, what exactly is an angle, right? What is this t equals 5 pi over 3? Well, remember, when we're doing an angle, an angle has two sides. We have our initial side, which is going to be on the x-axis. Then we're going to rotate a secondary ray off of our vertex from there, and that's going to be called our terminal side. But we need to be able to determine what is, then, where is this point, um, or where is this 5 pi over 3? So let's go and look at 2 thirds. 2 thirds pi. All right, and let's forget, let's talk about pi. Let's talk about a dollar bill. Right? If I say I have 2 thirds of a dollar, do I have more or less than a dollar? Less. If I say I have 5 thirds of a dollar, do I have more than a dollar or less than a dollar? More, right? Good. So now let's go back to pi. So if I have 5 thirds of pi, that means I have an angle that's larger than pi, correct? All right, so now we need to go back and remember, well, where does pi exactly come from? So we go to our point of pi. Remember what it took from our unit circle. When we have a circle, we have a distance, which we call the radius. And if we wrap that radius around a circle, we can wrap the radius around the circle three times, but we don't get it all the way. There's that little chunk that's extra which is a decimal, irrational decimal going on and on and on, which is 3.14159, so it's pi. So we know this distance in degrees is 180 degrees. But in radians, in terms of the radiuses wrapped around it, it's pi radians. So I have 5 pi over 3, right? I have an angle that's larger than pi. But how much larger? It's 2 thirds larger, right? I have two extra parts. So what I like to do when I'm trying to describe where this angle is, what I like to do is I like to take a look at my denominator and break up my pi into that denominator. Does everybody see how I now broke up half of the, I broke up pi, the distance from here to here, I broke it up into thirds. So you could say, well, if I had two angles from here to here, that would be one third. Right? If I did two ang if I did my angles here to if I did from here to here, that would be two thirds, right? And all the way around would be three thirds. So this is the same thing as three pi over three. Does that make a little sense? Israel, you got it? Good. So the question though is actually we can do this again on the bottom. Because remember, wrapped around all the way around a circle is two pi, which in this case would be six pi over three, right? Because six divided by three is two. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So here's my initial side. And I wrap all the way around to here. So there's my angle. Now what I need to do is determine where is this point. What is that point on the unit circle? If I have an angle at 5 pi over 3, where, what point is that on the unit circle? So then I go back to the playlist on what is the unit circle. And when I talked about memorizing the unit circle, I don't care about you guys knowing the whole unit circle. I care about you knowing what the first quadrant is. In the first quadrant, there was five points that I deemed were the most important. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. All right, And then these other points were off of angles that we found from um, special right triangles. The first angle, which was 30 degrees, which is equal to pi over 6. The second angle, which is 45 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over 4. And the third angle, which is 60 degrees, came from uh, pi over 3. All right. Then the next thing to know all the points on the unit circle in the first quadrant is we know we have three points. Each of these points are rational. They have an x and a y. The denominator of all the points is 2. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is just do this little fun thing. Square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. 
square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. And we know that the square root of 1 is always just 1. So guess what? There's the unit circle for the first quadrant. And that's all you guys need to know. But what is this point then? If here's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, right? Here's this big angle. What point does this relate to over here? And we got to think. If this is at 5 thirds, that means this is at 1, this is pi thirds away from the x inter, or away from the x axis, right? So what is the other angle over here that's that's pi thirds away from the x axis? This angle, right? This point. So it's really this point right here is this point being reflected. It's this point being reflected down. So if I take this point and I reflect it in the fourth quadrant, what is going, this point is going to be exactly the same, but what's negative in the fourth quadrant, the x or the y coordinate? Yes, Ryan, which one? Exactly. Which coordinate is negative, the x or the y in the fourth quadrant? The y. Very good. So therefore, the point, ladies and gentlemen, at 5 pi over 3 is going to be 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay? It's a very, very long explanation. Uh, 